Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on finding the last row and column using VBA in Excel. Oftentimes in counseling research, we work with large data sets. And when we need to add cases or participants, it's convenient to be able to locate the last row. And if we need to add variables, it's convenient to be able to locate the last column. The fictitious data I have on this worksheet is not a large amount of data where you would need a function to identify the last row and column. However, I chose a small data set to make it easier to demonstrate these functions. So you can see with this table, clearly the last row is 21 and the last column is 5, or E. So I have a user form that I can pull up clicking on this blue rectangle, which will provide me the location of the last row, 21, and of the last column, 5. And if I want to select the last row, I click this button, and you can see it comes up, 21. Or if I want to select the last column, column 5, or E, is selected. And I'm going to show you how to build a user form just like this one. So first I'm going to start by putting a rectangle, another rectangle, on the worksheet. And again there's many ways to call a user form, to show a user form. But just for purposes of demonstration I'm going to use this orange rectangle. Uh, Alt F11 is going to bring me over to the code view and inside sheet one data I'm going to want to add some code to show the next user form I'm going to build but first I need to put that user form in so be insert user form you can see it's automatically assigned the name user form 2 so I'm just going to use that so I'll call this sub open user form 2. And I'll have one line of code which will be user form 2 dot show. So the only thing I need to do now to get the user form to show is to assign a macro to this orange rectangle and of course I have the open user form 1 which is assigned to the blue rectangle so I'm going to select the open user form 2 to select the user form I just created. So now if I click the orange rectangle user form 2 comes up. Of course I haven't put anything on it yet. So moving back to code view. Moving to my new user form. I'm going to change the back color to a dark blue. I'm going to change the font to Times New Roman 12 and the four color for the font by default I'm going to set to white. So we know we're going to need six controls on this user form. First I'll put on the buttons so it'll be command button one this will be for selecting the last row and I'm going to make another button that matches this so it would be control C and then control V for copy and paste. I'm just going to put that one right under it and I'm going to change the caption so for the first one I'll change the caption to select last row and for command button this is actually command button 2 the caption says command button 1 I'm going to change this to select last column. And then I'm going to need four labels. So the first two labels I'm going to put on will be for the for displaying the last row. Put that here. And again I'm going to copy and paste this. And this label will be for the last column. and these will change depending on what the last row and the last column are. 
So I want two other labels that will not change. So I'll change the caption for label three. Once I put it in the correct location. And that'll be last row. And I'll copy and paste this one. And I'll change this caption to last column. So let's take a look at the worksheet and this user form now. We can see it has all the components we need. Of course, none of them are active. We have last row, last column. This will be where the last row appears. This will be the last column appears. And then we'll have a button for selecting each. We can see that we don't need it to be quite as tall. So going back into the user form, just going to shorten that up a little bit. And now let's put some code behind it for when it initializes. So I'm going to click on here and or right click on here and view code. And I'm going to add an initialize subroutine. So this code will execute whenever the user form is opened. So first I'll declare a variable for the row and for the column. So dim r as long, c as long. So r for row and c for column. And then I'm going to show you a few different ways to calculate the location of the last row. If you're using a data set where you are sure there are no missing values in column one, you can use this code to calculate the value of R. So it'd be R equals active sheet dot range A1 dot end and then Excel down dot row. And of course, then we just want to set the label one caption to be equal to R. Similarly, if when you're trying to calculate the column, there are no empty cells in row one, you can use a similar code. Matter of fact, it's so similar, I'm just going to copy this code up here and just show you where the changes are. So instead of R, of course, it changes to C. And the range will stay the same. All this will stay the same. And at the end, instead of Excel down, it'll be Excel to right. And then, of course, instead of row, it'll be column. And then again, I'll copy this. And instead of label 1, it'll be label 2. And instead of R, it'll be C. So this is one way it can be done. It's not necessarily the preferred way, and let me show you why. Moving to the worksheet, you see that with data populated in column 1 or A and row 1, we have accurate values. The last row is recorded as 21, which is correct, and the last col column as 5, which is correct. However, let's say I delete the variable name pretest and I delete participant 1015. So we could say this is a missing value here. Now you should never have a missing variable label, uh, but it could happen. You can see now it's calculated the last row is 15, even though that's not the last row, and the last column as 2, even though that's not the last column. So when potentially dealing with missing data, we we'll want to use a different line of code 
to calculate the values for R and for C. So first I'm going to comment out what I have for the code I have for calculating the values for R and C. So by putting this apostrophe in front of this line of code, Excel skips it. So when this subroutine executes, this is just a comment. It's in green and it's skipped. So it doesn't hurt to leave it in there. It doesn't affect anything. So I'm going to use a different line of code. So this is going to be active sheet cells, then active sheet dot rows dot count comma a and then dot end excel up dot row so a little longer than the first line of code but this can deal with missing data uh, the kind of missing data I showed you few moments ago. And to calculate C, I'm going to copy this, although again it will need some changes to work for the column. First the variable from we changed from R to C, and then instead of active sheets column count, and then A, we're going to have to move some things around. All right, so first this will be the second part of cells and it's going to be columns count. The first part is just going to be one. So one comma. So we change that and then instead of Excel up this is going to be Excel to left and instead of row this is going to be column. So let's see how this performs on the worksheet. So you can see with the missing values, it still gives us the correct last row and last column. If I were to return the values, 1015 as the missing ID and then pretest was the missing variable name. And of course, we'll still return the correct last row and the correct last column. So the only thing left to do now is to put code behind these two buttons so that when I click select last row, it moves me to the last row, and when I press last column, it moves to the last column. So going back into the code view and back to the user form, I'm going to double click on the command button 1 and the code here is fairly straightforward. This would be for selecting the row so I'm going to uh, declare R as long and R will equal label 1 caption and then we just need to select the correct cell. So it be cells R comma 1, select. For the last column, I'm going to go click on command button 2. I'm going to start the subroutine by declaring the variable C as long. Then C will be equal to label 2 dot caption and then the code to select the last column will be cells 1 comma C so row 1 and column C dot select So let's see how this looks on the worksheet. So we open up the new user form. We can see we have the correct row and com. If we click select last row, we do get the last row. 
and if we select last column we get the last column. If you wanted these buttons to select the next available row and column you would just need to go back into the code and where it cells R comma 1 it would be R plus 1 and cells 1C would be C plus 1. I hope you found this video on finding the last row and column to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.